Authorization groups in SAP Business One enable you to categorize authorizations according to your user needs and are an efficient way to assign authorizations to users in the system. To work with authorization groups, first navigate to the user groups window by going to Administration, Setup, General, and User Groups. You can view your existing authorization type groups by ensuring the group type is set to authorization. This will display your existing authorization groups. Right now, we do not have any user-defined authorization groups as the finance, sales, purchase, and inventory groups come with SAP Business One and are categories of authorizations based on common system use. We will see how we can use these as a starting point for our user-defined authorization groups later. To add a new group, change the window into Add Mode. Assign a name for the new group, as well as a description. For our example, we are going to set up a new temporary group for three summer interns that we are bringing in from some colleges in the area. Keep the group type as authorization, and you can also define a range of time that this authorization group will be active in the system. We are going to set this range in the header of the window from the 1st of June through the end of August of this year. Since we already set up their user records, we can go ahead and assign the interns to the group. The first two interns in the group will be with the company for the entire range of time as assigned in the header, but our third intern, John Jones, will only be with us until August 14th, so we can assign a specific date range that his authorizations will be active in the group. Now we are ready to add the group. Once we add it, it will appear under the group name column on the left side of the window. Now we need to assign authorizations to this group. Let's navigate to the general authorization window by going to Administration, System Initialization, Authorizations, and General Authorizations. We can see the authorization group that we just added by clicking the Groups tab on the left side of the window. You will notice that the predefined Finance, Sales, Purchasing, and Inventory groups, as well as our user-defined Interns group, are visible here. If we select the Interns 2020 group, you can see that it does not have any authorizations assigned in the system yet. We know that all of our interns will be working with the Purchasing Department so we can give ourselves a starting point by using the Copy Authorizations function. Highlight the Purchasing Group, and then select Copy Authorizations. Then, select the Interns 2020 group, and click OK, and then Yes. Now, our Interns 2020 group has the same authorizations as our Purchasing Authorization group. If we want, we can then go through and further refine the Interns group by making any manual additions or changes as needed. In this case, I don't want the interns to see the sales order balance on the business partner, so I'll set that to no authorization. It should be noted that when using the copy authorizations function, you can only copy authorizations from one group to another group, and from one user to another user, but you cannot cross between the two. Let's click on the Users tab and highlight one of our interns in the interns group. You can see that we have not set any of the authorizations manually for the user, but the effective authorization column will reflect the authorizations given to the user because they are assigned to the group. To assign additional authorizations to a user, you can assign them manually here, or you can assign the user to another group. Let's say, for instance, that Jessica will be working with the finance department in addition to the purchasing department. Back at the user's group window, we can simply navigate to the finance group and add her to this group, and then click update. Now, when we go back to the general authorization window, we can see that Jessica's effective authorizations now include her newly assigned group authorizations. As you might realize, a user could have multiple conflicting authorizations if they are assigned to different groups or if they have been manually signed an authorization. In these scenarios, the system will always grant the most generous authorization to the user, which will be reflected in the effective authorization column. Once you have your authorization groups set up, assigning authorizations to new users in the future is as easy as adding them to the group in the user group window. Utilizing authorization groups is just one example of the tools and functions that SAP Business One provides to help make the process of maintaining changes to your authorizations in the database efficient and easy. Join us as we help you learn more about what SAP Business One has to offer by clicking the subscribe button and turning on post notifications so you never miss a new video. As an SAP Gold Partner, LBSI can help you take full advantage of everything the system has to offer. To get in contact with us, visit our website at www.lbsi.com and navigate to the contact link. 
You can also email us at sales at lbsi.com for sales related inquiries or SAP support at lbsi.com if you're an existing client in need of support assistance. Thank you.